we go. Another episode of Dishing with the Delco Duo. We take your problems and we solve them or tell you to get over it. <laughs> Are you inspired by yes. National Get Over It Day? Yes, we had a few days back. Yeah, we had National Get Over It Day, and our uh, boss let me just tell you guys to get over it or not get over it. I don't think we've ever told anyone to get over it no. on audition, though. Like, we always sympathize, we empathize, we we really understand, and we don't yes. think that you ever need to get over it. We just try to help. We try to help. I, I think I did kind of indicate to that to that uh, woman last week that... Still weighing heavily on your mind. <laughs> that, who thought her boyfriend partied too much. Well, you were into the boyfriend. That was the problem. I was like, enjoy yourself. But anyway, yeah. Um, but don't talk about our boss because they could hear us up there. <laughs> what? I found this, out today. This is a revelation that um, the people in our newsroom can hear us doing this. <laughs> I mean, we, there have been plenty of times where we've thrown them under the bus. So now this is news to us. Yes. Hello, no. newsroom. Hello, newsroom, if you're watching. <laughs> or maybe they just mute us. Like, they, they hear the open and then mute. That's what I would do. Yeah. Instantly just mute. I do not care to listen. God, those gals are annoying. And then I also found out, sadly enough, um, <laughs> that my sister listened to one episode, and the one episode that she listened to we talked about her was the one where we talked about if you would be friends with your siblings. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, I can't believe you said that you didn't think you would be friends with me. Not only that, she's like, you called me irritating a number of times. And I was like, so this is your formal apology to Leah. Leah, we are so sorry. I did not call you annoying. Your sister did. Uh, she knows I love her more than anyone I think and I'm never going to not be truthful on this podcast like what I say in this yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it back because what it's I said is, is what I said I'm not taking it back what I want is to now put this out there is that like siblings get on everybody's nerves your siblings always get you on your nerves you don't need to revisit this topic but what I love about a sibling friendship is um, I've been thinking about this all week. <laughs> this is her public I apology. So, I feel so bad. <laughs> oh my I love God. and I appreciate her. All and, right. and Get I it out of the her. way. Let her know. Yes, I love you and I appreciate you. And, um, you know, uh, she is my best friend. Okay. I'm happy that we got that out of the way. <laughs> it's honestly so funny, though, because, you know, we're talking about other people's issues and we're creating issues for ourselves yes. by, by intertwining our life experiences. Our husbands think we talk about them too much. You yes. talk about your sibling. Our coworkers can hear us. So we're just creating problems <laughs> for really ourselves. Are. This we're is putting it on the line for you guys, okay? <laughs> our jobs, our marriages. Honest to God, our jobs. Our, our, our family. We are walking a very thin line right now between unemployment and employment. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. So we got another week of issues. Some good ones this week. But before we get to that, what's your oh. biggest fear? <laughs> I got to put that out there. You love when I ask these questions. What's your favorite do, movie? What's your favorite like, song? What's your biggest fear? What is my biggest fear? And it doesn't have to be that deep. Like, what are you just kind of like yeah. day in and day out scared by? Um, I'm scared by a lot. I feel like we talk about this a lot on the show, whether it's amusement yeah. park rides, spiders and bugs. Yes. I'm trying to think of what is my overall arching biggest fear, though. I would say... A plane ride? No, I've gotten over that. Oh. As a kid, 100%. But I've gotten over a plane ride. Yeah. I don't, there's just, working in the news does not help. Because you hear the worst of the worst. Yeah. Some of the most horrible stories. So I feel like when you think of those horrible news stories, that then right. something's going to happen to you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, so you I can't pinpoint hear. one major fear, but it's just like, life. Life. <laughs> I'm scared of life. <laughs> I'm scared of everything. <laughs> And sometimes it does limit you. Does. Like, I'm like, Jenna, no, do not live your life like that. Like, don't worry. No, I, I, don't, I don't feel like, like it holds well, me back. Like, am I going to go? I don't really care to go skydiving. Like, I'm scared to skydive, yes. but that's not changing my life. No, it's not I don't holding think, me back. <laughs> like, for instance, I think your biggest fear is that gold car. There was a car <laughs> that Jenna, serious. for, for about a They were trying a to kidnap me. I watch a lot of true crime, too. <laughs> so that probably doesn't help. I do watch a lot of true crime. And there was this gold car that Jenna would talk about every morning she'd come in. It was like, stalking me. I saw the gold car again. Who um, drives at 3 o'clock through a neighborhood yes. other than the paper boy? That's who it and ended that's up who being. that's who it was. But until we figured that out, man. He was just trying to deliver newspapers, and I thought he was trying to 
you know, abduct feel you. me. Um, my biggest fear, and which I guess is a good thing, is it, it really can't control my life because it's such an obscure biggest fear. But the movie The Exorcist really oh sent gosh. me for a loop. The girl terrifies me. Being possessed by the devil. That's your biggest fear? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> terrifying. No, you act like I'm ridiculous. Like common things like a spider, a plane, skydiving. You're you're afraid of an exorcism. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just I see I see where we stand here. <laughs> like it Well, you never, were young. You were young. So you were at young. a sleepover. You mm. don't like scary movies. And this was kind of like one of those things that happens at a sleepover. All your friends are watching it. There's not there's parental supervision, but it's not they're not like hawking over. But the mom should never have let us watch that. Well, that's that's the next follow up question. Did, did she put it on for you? She, did you ask for she, it? She, I remember she took us to Blockbuster and was like. Oh, Blockbuster trips yes, were yes. the best. Took us to Blockbuster and literally was like anything you want. And the girls all got in like a group and they're like, let's do it. We're doing the exorcist. And I just, I had no idea what I was well, How old were you again? I, th I was in fifth grade. Okay. So how old are you in fifth grade? Like, you know, I don't know. 10? Are you 12? No. I think you're 12, 13, eighth grade. So you're probably oh. like 10, 10 or 11. 11. Yeah. yeah. Too young. It's rated at R. What? What's I don't even R? think I've seen. Or older? Yeah. I don't even think I've seen The Exorcist full through. Mm. I, I, I watched like it, two seconds of it. What scene is it that scarred you? The head when she throws up? No, I didn't even watch those parts. So I, what, I had my part head under you? a blanket the whole time and I was singing Ave Maria. <laughs> So I couldn't hear. Warning um, off the devil. The, the scariest scene is she's getting an MRI because like something's going on. So they give her an this MRI. This is the one scene you yeah, watched. Like, like the one, I can't even talk about it. It's like making me so nervous. And like something flashes in front of her. I can't remember. I don't even remember really what happened. And then I think I saw her walk down the steps backwards. Oh, like when she's <laughs> in, in the back bend? Yes. Why? Like she's why? <laughs> and then I went on to later tell you that one of your sitters was possessed yes <laughs> but that watched my fun. kids because she had a problem with flies and jenna's like i think that's she... amityville horror mm. i believe that's the movie where it's the flies and the priest but, but like yeah that kind of stuff that yeah that that's it's not just fear. the exorcist it's like that whole like demonic yes, energy religious kind of tie-in you don't I bring that energy in here we do not and i think it's because i'm catholic yeah. you know what i mean well so, you're you were raised i to was be, raised to believe that yeah. this stuff happens is dark yes Okay, well, this took a turn that I was not expecting here, episode eight. <laughs> Let's talk about topic one from Manfred of Marcus Hook. Real quick. Oh, yeah. Where did you get this name, Manfred, from? Is that a name? It is a name. Manfred, uh, Manny in, um, uh, what's that called? Ice Age. His name is Manfred? Manfred. Okay, so it's it, an Ice Age, so then it must be. You're saying it in two syllables. Manfred? I don't think if you met someone, they it would want like you to Manfred. say Manfred. It's Manfred. 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 You could have said Manny, but you've used that name before. So you, you went you went professional here. You didn't go yeah. casual. Do you want to talk real quick? Oh, yes. This? Real quick. Uh, this morning on the show, if you're wondering what I'm drinking, cold pressed juice. Um, this was one of the women owned businesses in mm. Souderton. Yep. Raw replenish. And it's quite good. I let Monica. You like it? Yeah. I let you smell it. It smelled like a farm. It did smell like a farm. But in a good way. Which you could be off putting to bit. some, but to others like Jenna, if it smells like a farm, you know it's natural. The more natural, the better. Mm. Mm -hmm. Your sweat's going to be mm -hmm. delish. Mm. Smelling, Cheers. Smelling like a farm. Smelling like a farm. Good. I'm happy you brought that up because if you're watching, you're probably wondering what the heck that is. Right. Why it's such Why an it's, interesting color. I know. It's making my tongue purple or <laughs> pink or whatever. Watch I'm colorblind. Your teeth don't get stained. I think they already are. No, you're good. My tongue's really red. You're fine. All right, man. Manfred. 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 Let it roll, roll off the tongue. <laughs> my friend isn't answering my text, but is posting on social media. Mm, that's not a friend, Manfred. That's not a friend, Manfred. 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 <laughs> I am so annoyed by this because I yeah. feel like I've had this happen to me before. Really? Whether more fat, more so family, like oh. if it's a sister or like my mom. My mom loves posting on Instagram. And you know when she's yeah, and doing now things. it calls you out because if you uh, message back and forth with this person, it shows the little green light that shows that they're on. 
Like it says they're on Instagram if you go into your messages. Yes, it does. So you can see if they're on that way. But if they're posting to their story and they're liking things, it depends, it depends what the text message is. Like the text message that you want a response from. Well, if you say my texts, multiple texts, not answering. Plural. But posting on social media, how long has this been going on? Like, is this person ghosting you for a week? That's ridiculous. But if you're texting and they're posting to social media and it's been like three hours, no worries. Relax. And again, if like you're like my dog died and they don't answer that and they're posting on social media or you're like, can I borrow your dress? Something just like, you know, let it go. Yeah. it's Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. No. I think it's. Social media is hard because I have multiple conversations with the same person. Like, we'll text. We'll also be messaging on Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. for, for instance, Kelsey and I send each other a lot of, like, Bachelor stuff yes. and different stuff on Instagram. Oh, so we'll be texting. <laughs> my, te my teeth are turning purple. Um, um, I keep saying purple. Pink. If you want, you guys can include me in that. So we're texting, but then we're also sending messages on Instagram. So then you have two different conversations going mm -hmm. on, and then I don't ever answer a text anymore because I'm like, I'm still talking to you. Just... On social media. I would answer your text. <laughs> you don't watch. You don't watch the same shows that we watch. But I have told you guys, just because I don't watch it, you I just still, want to be included. I would like you to be included. You don't want to have any idea what we're referencing. You just want to be there. Well, I did find your conversation uh, that you recent, recently had about The Bachelor. I found it very interesting. And you both said, like, you don't even need to watch this to get yeah. into it. It's the truth. Um, and, and we're actually going to talk about that, I believe, yeah. in, in two seconds, um, about The Bachelor and, and certain um, discussions. But, um, so if you guys want, you can include me in those. Um, but for this, Manfred, if this has been going on for a while. I didn't even think of it like ghosting. Like, that didn't cross I my mind. I took it as ghosting. Okay. I can see now why, why I... this is a problem. I just thought, you know, every so often you send a few texts and... They're not answering you, but they're active. No, I, I took it like a longer, prolonged period of like, hey, everything okay? And, you know, you can say like, hey, everything okay? And if you if they're silent on everything, then you know what? Give them some space. But if they're posting on social media and they're like, hey, out here, yeah. so fun. They're like, what, what are you doing? So Manfred doesn't sound like a good friend. Unless they're an influencer and it's their job. Because you have to do, you also, have to post a lot. I was going to say that. Like, I know there's just a few influencers out there that you would, like, be friends with. But influencers also, like, schedule posts. You know what I mean? So True. so you could. This is very it, niche is very and very specific. specific. No. If they're not an influencer with, like, thousands of followers, yes. then they're just ignoring you. Yes, exactly. Flat out, man. But right. if you are best friends with Kim Kardashian, <laughs> you have to understand that she is posting. Or has or a team. Or has a team that is posting. I don't think Manfred from Marcus Hook, I don't think their friend has a team that's oh. posting for them on social media, unless it's like Aunt Mary Pat or something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Aunt Mary Pat has scheduled posts that go out every so often at a specific time to pull in more viewers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe ask them if their posts are scheduled. Yes. And that's a very passive aggressive way to say, why are you posting but you're not talking you're to You're not me? talking to me. Are you are you scheduling your posts? Oh, yeah. okay. That's the only reason you would not, not be answering. Not answer me. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Sarah from Swarthmore. This is where we're gonna tie in The Bachelor. The Bachelor, because that's a very hot topic right now. I think there is a lot of back and forth on social media about it. Mm -hmm. Should you have to ask someone you're exclusive with to not sleep with someone else? So let's talk just about this and then we'll talk about Bachelor because okay. this is a bit different in if this person and you have talked about it and you said we are exclusive. Define exclusive for our listeners who might not know what that I, is. That was like a serious conversation. Like when you would, you would talk with someone and like, oh, are we exclusive? Remember that yeah. conversation? Like you talk. You talk. And you're hooking stage up. Stage one. Hooking up. Talking, hooking up. And then you go to exclusive. exclusive. And then you go boyfriend, girlfriend. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Exclusive is not yes. boyfriend, girlfriend. That's very important to note. Yes. There's a little bit more love behind boyfriend, girlfriend. Exclusive. Commitment, I would say. Yes. It's, it's kind of like, hey, can you not sleep around? Because <laughs> I like you. I like you. I don't yeah. want to have to constantly get some. It's just um, the two of us. Tests done. No. So can you please. 
That's that's not everyone's that's version of exclusion. Well, that's a little bit that plays a little part into it. I don't want to have to worry about you messing around and me having to get some tests done. That's not what I'm thinking. Oh. I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking when you're exclusive, it's like, I really like you. If you only like me and want to be with me, then let's be exclusive together. I, I don't it's think... It's like one degree down from being a girlfriend or yes. a boyfriend. And even though it's a step down from a girlfriend and boyfriend level, you still should not have to ask this person. If you say, we are exclusive, you should not have to ask this person not to no. sleep with others. The word exclusive, it's, it's in the word. Exclusive. You're done, son. <laughs> Your life's over. <laughs> you're t- the old ball and chain. Yeah, the old ball. No, I uh, I agree. I feel like if you have that conversation that it's exclusive, then that you should not have to ask them. But that this goes without being said not yes. to do that. But the step down from that hooking up. If, fair if game. You, All is fair in love and war. Yeah, that person could be sleeping with someone else. Make sure you're getting tests done. <laughs> Why does it have to go straight to that? <laughs> Why can't you gotta you protect be- yourself. <laughs> oh, this show used to be PG. Oh, no. So now tying that in. So this yes. this episode this week of The Bachelor has gotten so much attention, even for people who do not even watch it. Basically, The Bachelor is now down to his final three. They're in the fantasy suite week, which we're on season 26 or 7. I don't even know. We've been doing this for a long time, almost 30 years that we've had this show now on the air. Wow. Um. Everybody knows that the week of fantasy suites is the overnight dates, which means the final three girls have time, or men, because the bachelorette does the same thing, have time with the lead, without cameras, without microphones, an overnight stay. Mm -hmm. This one in particular is getting so much attention, I think, because he comes out and says who he has slept with on the show And the drama is the, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it yet, the final contestant who was the lead in a lot of people's opinion. Right. Asked him if he had been intimate with the other girls because that's something she can't compromise on. He told her that he was. So she, they they ended. It it was a big fight. It was explosive. And she she left. She left. He he <clears throat> technically sent her home. Yeah. His reaction was. I also think is what's getting so much attention. He it wasn't very nice. It no, wasn't it was understanding a, as no. to why she was it, upset. It turned about into that. her fault that he had already slept with the other two contestants. But his whole thing is that kind of going back to this. You never said we were exclusive. You never asked me not to. Asked me not. That's to do what that. he. So his argument was, well, if you would have told me last week that you didn't want me to do this, you should have told me. Which, and that brings the question, do you tell somebody not to do that? Well, and they were never exclusive, especially on a dating show like The Bachelor. You cannot be exclusive. The only people who did that were Claire and Dale. And that, we saw how that And ended. we saw how that went. It did not <laughs> go <Train> well. <laughs> but it's you gotta, hard because I could see both sides of it. You know what you're signing up for when you're getting onto this show. You know there's a fantasy suite week. And, you know, yeah. producers, they could have just put her first and this whole debacle would have been avoided. But they put her last because it makes good television. It makes good television. And now they're stuck in a sticky situation where yep. you're spending overnight time. Like, what are you supposed to do? Just talk? Like, no. Well, I- some, like, bachelors and bachelorettes do make you think. Like, no bachelor has ever come out and said, I have slept with both of you. This, this is-, is the first time that this has ever happened. That's wild to me. And I actually have more respect for the show. I don't watch it. So I have more respect for the show. I thought everybody was just sleeping around. Men, no. women, just everybody was like, okay, let me try this out. No. Um, but now it, it seems like it's very, like, lovey love. Uh, well, you know, they put them in these romantic situations where how can you not fall in love? You're in Iceland. Yes, you're like in, you said. yeah, you're in Croatia. Hot tubs, hot tubs in Iceland. You're, you're doing, you know, helicopter tours. It's all yes. very romantic and beautiful. But I don't know. I can see both sides of this. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Yes. So, so I think, um, I think he's kind of right in saying, like, I didn't even know we were that exclusive. So, but then he says that he was most in love with her. But most in love. But he says he's in love. He's in love with. with, He's in love with all three of them. And then for her to be like, oh my gosh, you know. But if you're most in love with me, then I want you locked down. Well, the whole point of the show is to see if you like these. Explore your options. Explore your options. I. But then I think him being like, I can't believe you ruined us. Like you're. That's not. You know, that she has a feeling. Yeah. You can say, you know what, I'm really sorry. I did not realize. I I do want to take us to the next level. Let's now say we are exclusive and I'm done. I don't want to say she was testing him, but it was almost like 
if you think that I'm going to be who you pick at the end and we're going, getting engaged in a week, because it's a week after that the final person gets engaged, I would hope that you wouldn't do that. Yeah, but but he's not even, yeah, no, he, uh, he can't be that committed to someone on a dating show. I know. That when just, there's two other women who he, he likes because, you know, you're sitting in hot tubs in Iceland. He's getting a lot of a lot of backlash for that. People say yeah, you shouldn't you have could be to nicer ask about your it. significant other not to sleep with people, but when you've three, not significant others, when you've three significant others. Yes, but and then he's like, "Oh, I love you." The mo- I love Stay you tuned for the next. Most although it's it's very like uh, Hugh Hefner esque, where he's got <laughs> the Bachelor the three, Mansion, the yeah. Playboy Mansion. Yes, he's one got in the three. Same. He's got three women. I loved the girls next door. Did you ever watch that show? Bridget, Kendra, yes. and Holly. And yes, yes, I loved that show. Um, I probably was way too young to be watching that. Well, I was in college at the time. I and was definitely it was, like. It was mind opening that my roommate brought the TV and was like, hey, I really like the show. Why don't you start watching it with me? And I was like. Who was your favorite? I liked Bridget the best. Uh, no, uh, I actually loved Holly. Like, even well, though Holly she was the now number is, one. There's a new documentary where there, she's yeah. a main talker in it about how, like, the how it was the a dark bad, side yes. of the Playboy Mansion. Uh, I don't know why anybody's surprised there was a dark side to Playboy. <laughs> Do you think it was all rose-colored glass? No. Yes. There's obviously going to be a very dark side to Playboy Mansion, yeah. and, and I'm surprised anybody's surprised by it. Yeah, well, she's now... But I liked, I liked Holly, and Kendra, I thought, was hysterical. Yeah, she was just there for a good time. She She, was, she didn't care about half. She was just she there to not. be young and living in that mansion. <laughs> she was like, um, so I was like, how do you stay so thin? She's like, I just sleep all day. And yeah. I was like, yes. She And it's like, Kendra. when you look back at it, like, she was probably 19. She, yeah, 19 she, at the time. But you know what? Or 20. She was the, she was, yeah. that's the dark side. And then she dated an Eagles player. Well, I think her life kind of spiraled after that. I know she yeah, had a lot of issues. And it didn't end well, but now she's doing a um, real estate show. Oh. She's trying to get back into the reality business. All right, maybe she'll sell some mansions. Maybe. Okay, now you just got lazy. Who's E from Edgemont? <laughs> now, E no. from Edgemont. That's did not- you forget to put a name? I did. Because I was waiting for you to send me the oh. things, and I was like, all right, we're going to do someone with the E name from Edgemont. E and from then Edgemont. Eminem. But then I thought, Slim Shady. I really want um, Eugene, my baby, Eugene, not my husband, e. to be called E. I thought it was Dean. No. Uh, I see. I'm trying. I'm trying things out. Burp, 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 burp. The thing is, though, it's not up to you. It's up to his peers. See, I have heard differently. A lot of people have said, if you want to have a nickname for your child, you have to well, start from the Well, I guess they the introduce beginning. themselves. Yeah. Like, my nephew Luke thinks his name's Lukey. Lukey? Because we call him Lukey. So when he sees people at school, he says, I'm Lukey. And it's the cutest thing that's ever. But I'm like, thing. you're not Lukey. You're Luke. <laughs> Lukey. Aww. I love it. See, that's I what love I mean. My like, we got to just start. Yeah. So right now, I want to start calling him Baby E. And then as he gets older, just E. Um, okay. So that this is my one way I'm doing best it. best friend's brother is E, but his, he's Ian. But he, they call him E. E? Yeah. And I, that's what I was thinking is we just start calling All him right. E. All right. E from Edgemont then. Yes. Our daughter accidentally damaged property, and now we can't afford to fix it. So there's Crazy. a lot behind, like backstory to this, obviously, yes. that we couldn't fit on this card. But basically, it looks like their Good daughter show. and her group of friends were playing in a courtyard with a baseball. It was like a nice day or whatever. Yeah. So this um, happened a couple of weeks ago. I have a lot of details about this. Yeah. Somehow this baseball ended up in one of the residents' windshields of their car. Okay. Shattered. The parents did not find out about this incident until a couple days later when the owner of that vehicle actually followed one of the kids home and confronted that child's parents. Oh, wow. Because how else is he going to find these people? Yeah. You know what I mean? Which also is an issue in itself. Like confrontation. and So that child's parents then contacted these people Mm -hmm. to tell them the story. And now he wants to be paid not only for the windshield, but also for his missed labor because he couldn't drive to work because his car was out of commission. So he wants them to pay for the days that he missed from work. Well, I mean, legally, you guys. It is legal. There is legal. They, they consulted legal counsel and it is legal for missed, missed, days, of work. missed days of work or whatever the, whatever the legal term would be. So that's the backstory because they, they said they could afford the windshield because they're all chipping in. There's like three parents, I think, with these kids. But it's the missed days of work where other families are like, let's just pay it. And this family's like, this is too much. I can't afford this. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, obviously I'm going into like parent mode and like simplifying this, like your kids should be paying for this, like make them work. But if you can't afford the cost up front for your kid to pay you back, like that's what I would do is, yeah. is I would put the money. I think up. they point blank. It's just not in the budget right it's now. It's not in the budget. And that's really difficult. Like, what especially you, nowadays, like this is a recent issue. Like it's, so, it's everything's so expensive. What are you supposed to do? Go into debt because someone missed work? Like, uh, but I, I guess at a certain point, you got to maybe. I would, I would think like maybe ask one of the other parents involved. Can you cover? I, it's always hard borrowing money because then that's, that's a whole I mean, like, other problem. Yeah. So like, it's With hard friends. to be like, can you cover this for me? And then I'll pay you back, but... I wonder... Oh, I know this sounds... You wonder if you could talk with the person. Person does not sound to be very pleasant. Right. But I mean, they're they following might, this kid home to... F we'll, we'll work for you. Like, can you reduce our our costs? You know, um, we'll work for you, do what you... Around your house so that it costs less... Your life costs less. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know how... I'll mow your lawn all summer long. And and therefore you don't need a landscaper or you yeah. don't need to do it. And can I can I help work for you? It the, sounds the like the person it, whose car was impacted. Yeah, but this person does right. Like again, sounds like they're not happy at they're all. They're just so, in it for the money. Right. So it's like, uh, do I really want to come and mow your lawn all summer when you hate me? And honestly, like, is and you don't want to put your mistake. kid in that. It was you, a, yeah. I mean, they're I think they're like what maybe twelve or thirteen, but like at the same time, it's still a mistake. You didn't intentionally mean to shatter this man's windshield. No. And I think he missed like four days of work or something which is a lot but like can you also get a benefit from work like don't you have six days or like right but, I guess but it's someone who's working hourly yeah you know you're missing out on, on on that but I have never heard of that but you can kind of sue someone for missed days of work because of an accident that's crazy it's and I legal jargon that I don't know exactly what it is but yeah I yeah, I think this is really tough because there's like there's no right or wrong answer. There's just like, what do you do? It's just an awful situation for but, everyone involved. And I think just because your kid, um, it was an accident, the fact that your kid did not come to you and, and tell, tell you. Well, that's scary. Picture you shattered someone's windshield. I would be so scared to tell my parents that. I know, but, but, but now, you know, if maybe your parents had gotten out ahead of it, this guy wouldn't have been able to get legal action involved. True. You could have maybe handled this um, aside and said, can we replace, you know. So your neighbor comes, you know, a week later and says, Josephine has smashed my window and you owe me $10,000. What would you do? <laughs> What would you do? $10,000. I just ballpark in, you know? No. Um, you know, I think this is really tough. Um, I, I would, again, I would pay for the cost up front if we could afford it. I would pay for it up front, and then I would tell jo JoJo. Joe would work the rest of her life. Yeah, to, to pay us back. Okay. I know it's an accident, but don't care. You got to be more careful with your baseballs. Yeah. Exactly, and that, that's I'm, I'm not paying for it. It wasn't my baseball. This is a big life lesson in discipline. All right, we have yep. two minutes left, so let's do this one quick. We just time got away from us. So many, yes. so many issues was, today. Yes, the uh, mailbox, etc. Mailbox, etc. <laughs> Ever since you've taken the graphics over, I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know what that. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I did. Our, our boss was like, I'm, I'm sick of putting this stuff into the rundown. Monica, you do it. And I was like, <laughs> mailbox, etc. Okay. Mailbox, etc. Uh, so. Um, uh, one of our coworkers, this is not anonymous because Amanda doesn't really mind. Um, she, we, when we were doing the get over it day, she asked, should I get over it? Because our um, postman slash Amazon uh, FedEx people, we specifically bought one of those containers. And it's where really they, nice. Yeah, it's really nice. You know, it, it's well marked that they can put all of their packages in this box so that porch pirates are less likely to steal it, which they have a big issue with porch pirates yeah. um, in South Philly. So uh, they bought this. They went out of their way. They marked it really nice. You know, please place the packages here. And they can With the logos of yes, the different the companies, like the Amazon logo, the Amazon FedEx, like it, it could not be more clear that that's where FedEx they want their packages here. to be. UPS here. I mean, some weird you, brown shipping, whatever, please right here. They, they indicated, yeah. and, um, but they continue, uh, their package, their delivery people continue to just put it in the, on where everybody can see. And she's like, do I need to get over this? And I said, no, no, you do not. But it's hard because different companies, again, are delivering your packages. So who do you talk to? Right. 
especially in Philly, you're getting a lot of different delivery people. I know for for my neighborhood, it's a lot of the same people yeah. that deliver. I'm just laughing because we have 15 seconds left. We Make can't sure. really dive into this. Maybe we can talk about it more next week. Or you can tune into PHL 17. Oh, yes, that's news. true, too. You've been served. <laughs>